Today here on FTD Facts, we are going to learn about Huawei, with everyone discussing the whole secret information leak and all that jazz. All I can say is, well, I totally saw that coming. It's not a huge surprise. However, today we are going to look at the company as a whole and get an understanding, at least a little bit, about the whole company, how it started, and some cool facts about it. What's up everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to FTD Facts. My name is Dave Wapple and I hope you guys are just having an amazing day. Now, we're gonna talk about Huawei because yeah, everybody's talking about it, but I kind of wanted to take a different angle and learn about the company itself. Of course, the Americans can be a little mad about this company because it's proved to be a leak in their system, but let's be perfectly honest, America has been doing espionage in other countries for a long time, so yeah, it's, that's, that's that. Personally, myself, I'm not going to get into any politics about this. However, me as a Canadian, I'm not really happy because of this whole issue that the United States pulled us into it, but that is my opinion aside. But let's get started. Now, Huawei is a Chinese multinational telecommunications corporation. And surprisingly, it hasn't been around for a long time. For example, I'm actually older than this company only by one year because it started in 1987. The company was founded by Ren Zhangyi, who was actually 42 years old when he started this company, so it teaches you something. You don't have to be super young to start a company and make a lot of money. Before he started this company, Ren was an officer for the People's Liberation Army, and with everyone talking about the whole trade secrets and espionage, you could say that it already had a military background from the beginning. In today's world, however, the company is present in over 170 countries around the world, with offices in at least 140 of them. In 2011, it was listed as the 45th of 50 top telecommunication companies in the world. Within these countries, it has 21 research and development institutions all over them, spending approximately $13.8 billion on research. As a matter of fact, as of 2017, one third of the entire company's workforce is dedicated to research and development, which equals 76,000 of the 176,000 employees. I'm not gonna lie though, I actually thought that they would have a lot more than that. Hmm. By 2012, this company actually beat Ericsson as the largest manufacturer of telecommunication products on the planet, and in 2018, it finally actually beat Apple and was the second in terms of smartphone purchases. Obviously coming after Samsung, which for me, I'm like, thank God the Apple craze is over. Never been an Apple guy. Mac, no. iPhone, had it. Not for me. In 2018, it also had an annual revenue of $108.5 billion, which was a 21% increase from the previous year. As well, in today's world, it's part of 1,500 networks and reaches one third of the entire world's population. And it's also thought to be the top 5G provider in the entire world. Okay, so let's get this aside. Let's look at some of the history of this company. Now for them, they didn't start off making their own products. That wasn't kind of a big thing for the company when it began. This is because in the 1980s, Rang Zhengfi thought it was a good idea to reverse engineer a lot of telecommunication technology. This was also more beneficial than attempting to secure technology sharing because during the 1980s, there was kind of a real big dark time with China. A lot of countries around the world didn't really want to do any trading with that country and therefore companies within those nations could not actually do any technology sharing. For example, one of the biggest things was the Tiananmen Square. There was a lot of military technology that was pretty much kiboshed because they were not allowed to share after this incident. As a matter of fact, just so you guys know, with all the bans going on China just recently, China banned Wikipedia, like literally a couple of days ago. Dang. Which actually most of you will think, oh, well, that's really bad that people can't access information in China from around the world. But that also means people who are outside of China, such as myself and maybe a lot of you viewers, you won't be able to get up to date information from people who contribute to the website. So a lot of history might be gone. Anyways, back to Ren making this company. At the time, China's telecommunications were all foreign. And for how the whole thing got started, well, there is a lot of gray zones, a lot of controversial, like, you know, difference of opinions of how it all began. For example, some people say, yeah, there were a lot of loans given to the company, and then some were like, nah, that didn't happen. One major point was in 1993 when the company had a big product, which was the telephone switch known as the C&C08. 
Keep in mind at the same time of developing this, at least 200 other companies were doing the same thing. The goal of this company was trying to get rid of foreign use and go more domestic. Ren felt that companies like Bell wouldn't be too kind to sharing things to China during that time. And for that reason, you might think that research and development, yeah, it takes up a lot of the company's, you know, money and workforce. That's been a part of the company's sort of way of doing things from the very beginning. Now, one big problem that the company had in its initial stages was getting investors. As a matter of fact, not many people really wanted to invest within a company that was not owned by the state. For that reason, a lot of the loans for the company were very high. As a matter of fact, the company reports that they had to pay anywhere between 20 to 30% for interest, depending on the loan. But that didn't stop them because by 1996, the company of Huawei had 20% of the entire switch market in China. The only one that was above them was obviously Shanghai Bell, which they ended up squashing them by giving out free products or massive cuts in prices. By 1997, this is where the company went international. It got a contract for Hong Kong. Keep in mind, Hong Kong is not necessarily part of China. It classifies as its own kind of separate protectorate or nation. So therefore it went international. This is when it launched its GSM, which is a global systems for mobile communications. And even after that, the company still continued to grow as it had research and development centers in India at that year, as well as one was developed in Sweden in the year 2000. And then the USA got their own in 2001. Now, by 2004, it shipped its first mobile phone. This was known as the C300, and shortly after that, the first 3G phone was released in 2005, known as the U626. By 2009, though, this is where they had their very first ever Android smartphone. Known as the U8220, but by the year of 2012, they released the Ascend series of phones, which pretty much became their big boy phones. This is the one that everybody wanted to buy. As well, in 2013, the Ascend P2 was launched as the world's first LTE Category 4 smartphone. Now, the Ascend series was very popular until about 2015 when they launched the brand new P series. One of the big selling points for the P series was their partnership with Google when they created the Nexus 6P. The company has also been labeled as China's most globally successful company, and it was the first Chinese company to get listed on Interbrand. It was also listed in Forbes in 2017 as the most important telecommunication companies in the world. And more importantly, it's also done a lot of things to help developing nations. For example, it's contributed funding, equipment, and training to nations like Nigeria, Bangladesh, India, and Indonesia, and many more. It's also a part of the Green Touch program, which a lot of other companies are a part of as well. It's an initiative to try to make telecommunication companies a little more green and energy efficient. On top of that, they are also part of the UNESCO World Program known as the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development to bring internet to all nations. On top of that, it's initiated scholarships and stuff of that nature in other countries, and it even invested $1.4 million to the University of Ottawa, which everybody praises, but I mean, a company that's making that much money, I'm just going to say $1.4 million is a little, yeah, not that much. Yeah, I know, I could be a little bit more positive, but... That's great. Now, of course, this company has had a lot of controversial issues and it's had that espionage issue. One other thing some people label this company as is a company that has bad work ethics towards its customers and even its workers. However, I'm going to do kind of that sort of thing in a separate video. So if you guys are really liking that and you want to see that, be sure to hit the like button on this video and leave a comment down there so I know that you guys want to see that one. But believe it or not, Huawei is actually a company that is employee owned. As a matter of fact, 64% of the company takes part in what is known as virtual restricted shares. I don't know exactly what that means, but from my understanding is these employees cannot trade their shares and these individuals are awarded based off of performance. This also means that the employees, although they make up a major percentage of the company, they don't contribute to any of the decisions for the 
company because Ren has the power to veto any decision that is made within the company if he doesn't like it. However, there is a positive side. They do have a union in which every five years they vote on leadership. They do have 51 reps and approximately 17 board of directors. So there you go guys, that is me looking at the company of Huawei, and if I missed any facts on this company, feel free to let me know down there in the comments section below. But thanks for watching, again if you want me to look into the controversies of this you know, company, feel free to let me know down there and hit that like button so I know you guys are interested in it. But other than that, my name is Dave Wapple, and before you guys get out of here, I just want to let you know, check out our sponsor, that is Grammarly.com. If you guys want to get better on your grammar, because I know I need it every single day, Guys, go down there in the description box below and download from the link because it is a free program. It's really beneficial. You'll like it. But you guys have yourself a fantastic day. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. All right. So, by the way, before you get out of here, here, check out some of our cool playlists. I mean, I've done stuff on phones for this video. I've never done anything else playlist-wise on phones. But we have some really great different playlists that I think you guys will enjoy. Feel free to check them out. You guys have yourself a good day, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hooah!